Religious freedom has been making headlines all over the world, from the debate on funding for Catholic schools in Canada to pro-life laws right here in the U.S. But in Pakistan, where Christians make up less than 5% of the population, it's a matter of life and death. Joining us now is Asif Mal, chair of the Pakistan Minorities Rights Organization, a group based in the United Kingdom advocating for religious minorities in Pakistan. Asif, first of all, give us a snapshot of what life is like for Christians in Pakistan right now. Uh, thank you very much, Wyatt, for having me at, on your show. Uh, yes, the life is, uh, is very uncomfortable, uh, being a Christian right now, uh, because you can um, be discriminated against uh, when it comes to jobs uh, and admissions in various, uh, various colleges. Uh, 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 medical colleges, engineering universities, and also there are groups that will accuse you of blasphemy, and on the pretext of that, the whole area where you live uh, could be burned down. It's pretty horrific when you think about all that violence. Explain, though, the blasphemy laws. What exactly does the law say so a Christian, for example, can't preach the gospel? Uh, yes, it's like this. If you are a Christian and I'm a Muslim, and um, it is in a country like Pakistan, we get involved in talking to each other while traveling in a bus or a train. Uh, imagine that during our conversation I find out that uh, you are a Christian or a Catholic and I uh, ask you, do you believe that Muhammad was a true prophet of God? Now, if you say yes, then I will say what a hypocrite you are. You believe that he was a true prophet and still you are not a Muslim. If you say no, then guess what? You have just committed blasphemy because you have uh, said that Muhammad is not a true prophet of God. And all I have to do is to bring two pious looking, uh, bearded, skull cap wearing Muslims to come and testify that with me in the court and you are dead meat. That's how it goes. Uh, and so Asiya Bibi is one of the most prominent cases, but there are a few hundred Christians falsely accused under this law in prisons right now. Well, let's expand on that for, for Asiya Bibi. She's a Christian woman who was sentenced to death for blasphemy, just like what you had made reference to. Her husband had gone to Pope Francis three years ago in Rome and, and talked with him briefly. Give us an update on her case. Is, is she, my understanding is that she was in prison still, right? Uh, she is in prison. It's almost like coming to 10 years. She's in, she's in prison. And obviously the background of the case, though, for those viewers who do not, do not know about this, uh, she was basically, she all her crime was to drink a cup of water that was designated for uh, for, to be used by Muslims and they said you Christians because you are unclean people you eat unclean food like pork and stuff and so you have actually uh, contaminated our cup. She basically defended that th that's not the case we're all human beings we're all equal we all have dignity and respect and they were not satisfied they accused her of blasphemy as a matter of fact initially they beat her up then she was raped Right now, the situation is such that her case is in the Supreme Court, and it was supposed to be heard last year in October, but at the 11th hour, one of the judges withdrew. I have uh, I've heard a rumor that next month is likely for her case to be, uh, to be heard again. You're in Washington uh, this weekend for a night of prayer for persecuted Christians around the world. Aside from prayer, what do you think Americans can do to help religious minorities in Pakistan, for example? So if the United States government, uh, you, you talk to your government, you talk to your senators and congressmen, and convince them that something something needs to be done. Well, it is tough to be able to hear about all of the tragedies that's going on in Pakistan when it comes to religious minorities, but so important that we highlight it. Asif Mal, Pakistan Minorities Rights Organization, thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you.